الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على رسول المصطفى أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and welcome back to سيرته خاتم النبيين I'm glad you could join me if you recall from the last uh, episode I sort of left you on a, a slightly sort of intro to another point another fazilat and that was comparing the Quran Al Quran Al Quran Al Karim with the other books the Torah Wal Injil Wal Zabur and this is referring to them in their original uh, original form, in the original revealed form. We're not talking about now the uh, the Talmud or the Torah, uh, the uh, the Psalms and the Bible. We're referring to them in their original form. And w what is being described is that the book which was given to the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Yani Al Quran, includes all the other books in terms of uh, the points that it's making and the uh, equivalent, if I could use that word. And then there's also some extra bit. For, for example, in place of the uh, Torah, uh, what, we ha what we understand is that, uh, from the explanation of the Prophet وسلم, is that he's been given a sub tiwal And these are the sort of longest surahs in the uh, uh, Quran. And they are uh, Al-Imran, uh, Al-Nisa, uh, Al-Ma'idah, Al-An'am, Al-A'raf. Um, and then we have the Al-Anfal and Tawbah, which are sometimes counted as one. So we have these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, because Anfal and Tawbah together are counted as one. Some don't c consider them a separate uh, surah, some consider them uh, to be one. And so these are what's equivalent to the Torah. Uh, in terms of equivalent or in place of, let me use that word, that might be a better word to use, in place of, so in place of the Zabur, uh, there are the Mi'in, and the Mi'in, are those which are considered, uh, or those uh, surahs which, or su suur, which is a plural, uh, I'm using the English and the Arabic at the same time, those surahs which have a hundred ayats in them. And in place of the Injil, uh, what's being given is the Mathani. Uh, and the Mathani here is referring to Surah Al-Fatiha in one case, and also referring to all those suur or surahs uh, which have uh, less than a hundred ayats. So what's the extra bit? So the extra bit here is the Mufassal as we uh, have. And we have three Mufassal. One is the uh, Tiwal, the Awsat, and the Qisar. The Tiwal is from Surah Hujarat to Buruj. Uh, the Awsat is from Surah Tariq um, up to Bayna. And then the Qisar is from Iza Zulzilat uh, all the way to the end. So these are being given as an, as an extra part uh, in addition to the various parts of the Quran which have been given in exchange. So just to go again, uh, in exchange of the Torah, we have the uh, seven longest surahs. Uh, in exchange of the Zabur, we have those which have a hundred ayats. In exchange of the Injil, uh, it's uh, all those which are less than a hundred or Surah Al-Fatiha itself. And in terms of the extra portion, uh, that sort of last part of the uh, uh, Quran which is split into three parts itself. Um, the other excellence due to the Prophet Sassam, if you recall, this, these first few episodes, uh, today will most likely be the last one uh, before we really get into the uh, uh, nuts and bolts of the uh, seerah. Uh, and here, for instance, we have that this Ummah will actually perform less deeds than those who came before them, uh, but they will get more reward uh, in terms of what they're doing. And this is based... Uh, upon the um, uh, Sayyid Hadith, uh, which is mentioned where uh, a man hires a, a, a particular group of people and they work between this time and this time and he gives them this much uh, pay and then he, he, he hires them for a, another length of time and he gives them uh, different pay until the last group work for the least time but get the most pay. Uh, we also see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave a choice to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the choice he said was that you can have the mafatihu kunuz al ard, you can have the keys to all the treasure on the earth, uh, and he was given the choice to be either a king, a king prophet, or to be a slave prophet. So we see here, for example, in the uh, examples or in the uh, time of the uh, uh, Bani Israel, where many of them were kings as well as prophets and they had the authority and kingdom over the land and uh, they didn't and they were also prophets and this choice was offered to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam 
Uh, and what uh, the Prophet Sallallahu did was given these two choices. So he was given the keys to the world. And the two choices offered him to him was you can be a, uh, a king prophet or a, a, a non-king prophet. Arguably a, a, a normal person. So he asked uh, Jibreel alayhi salatu salam, and Jibreel alayhi salatu salam gave ishara towards, or he gave his mashwara towards, and tawada to be humble, uh, to take humility. So what he chose was the Prophet sallallahu alayhi said, I'd rather be a Nabi and Abdan. Uh, I want to be hungry one day. I want to be full another day. Uh, and uh, when I'm uh, hungry, obviously what I will do is I will supplicate. Uh, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and when I am full I will thank uh, and show my gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it's an interesting thing here which we talk about um, that a Muslim is is always in touch with Allah a Muslim is always in touch with Allah we go through life and usually we have good times and bad times you know and something in between but we rarely have something in between it's either good or bad either we're happy with the way our life is going and we're happy with things around us or we're not so happy with things around us and when we are happy with things around us then we usually forget Allah we think well you know I'm obviously the cause of this I'm great I am fantastic I due to my efforts I've got a good job uh, due to my handsome good looks and my wit uh, I have got a a beautiful wife uh, due to my greatness and my wife's greatness we've got great children because uh, the A beautiful because they've got my genes and B uh, because we spend time with them and we give them tarbiyat. That's why they're uh, great kids. Um, and, you know, I've got a good job because uh, I worked hard for it. And, and everything else that goes with that, it seems to be I, 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 I. And we forget Allah SWT altogether. But when things are bad, um, we can either go two directions. One direction we go in is, is, is anger, uh, aggression. We try to find out who caused this issue, even though we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is behind everything. And we then go for that. So if somebody bangs into our car, rather than thinking, well, you know, I wasn't, I had my hand on the, I was, I was playing with my phone. I wasn't really concentrating. Rather than sort of putting the blame squarely on oneself and saying, this was takdeer. Uh, I need to learn from this, learn from my mistakes, learn from my experience. Rather than saying that, you know, he has a go at the, uh, the other chap and makes it more problematic. Or takes the other path and then falls on the musalla, uh, holds his hands up in the air and starts begging Allah, Ya Allah, you know, why am I in this situation? Or that, you know, could please give this to me, please give that to me, please give that to me. And I give it by saying that, I just remember the third option. And the third option is, is that why me, why me? We kind of have that philosophy as well. Uh, why me? You know, what have I done? You know, I pray salah once a year. Uh, you know, I have a three-day stubble. You know, what's why me? Why me? Uh, why isn't it happening to this person? He's a drug dealer. Why isn't it happening to that person? He doesn't pray salah at all. Why isn't it happening to this person? Why is he okay? So, you know, there's so many negative ways ways we can deal with it uh, but one negative way or one way of dealing with it is we raise our hands I'm not saying that we shouldn't call on Allah when things are difficult uh, what I am saying obviously is that the, those circumstances or the person who's in those circumstances forgets Allah SWT when the times are good and the Prophet chose that particular path now even though he never became a king uh, he had give, he, he had authority on the land we see that he's one of very few Anbiya that did not take the office of uh, uh, kingship. He's one of the very few Anbiya who did not take the office of kingship, but then still had authority. And this is so remarkable, uh, which is another excellence of the Prophet ﷺ, because what we normally saw was this divide. Either the, the, the Anbiya were kings and they were powerful men, uh, in order, and Allah did that for a reason, in order for them to be able to uh, implement the Sharia, for them to be able to propagate Islam without any uh, boundaries or, or prevention from other parties. Um, and, and, and some were, were very poor. They, they had no clout in the world. Uh, we see the, the, the predicament that Lut was in. Uh, we see the predicament that Musa entered in. Uh, and we see all the situations, uh, Ibrahim والسلام, and the difficulties that they faced from their own uh, 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 people in terms of bringing the message to them. Uh, and so we have that. But Rasulullah sits in a unique place. Is that neither was he a, a, a king, and neither was he in a situation where his own people turned against him. Yes, they did in the early stages, we see in the, in the time of uh, Makkah and Quraysh. But really, within a very short space of time, there was a huge cultural change. And there was a, mag you know, a huge, you know, uh, magnificent change 
uh, in, in the whole outlook of the Arabs, which had never happened before. Even the superpowers of the day, the Byzantium uh, uh, Empire uh, and the uh, Persian Empire, the Sassanid Empire, never got involved with the Arabs because they said, you know, well, let, leave them to it. Um, how can you bring this group of people, this disparate group of people, these various tribe, tribal differences, there's so many differences between these people, how can you bring them onto one platform? It's not worth it. You're going to lose men and, and for what? For, for, for sand, for, for soil? It's not worth the, the effort, the men and the, the time. Yet one man with, with, you know, with, with the greatest uh, power uh, 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 assisting him uh, managed to change uh, this, these, these, these sort of disparate groups of people and bring them together uh, under one banner. Um, so, so this shows that the Prophet Sassam preferred to be preoccupied in the worship and, and, and connected with Allah. Whether times were good, he was connected with Allah to be grateful, and whether times were bad, he was connected with he, he used both opportunities, and he preferred it to change, because when good times stay for a long time, we then slowly start to forget Allah. When bad times stay for a long time, we slowly forget Allah. But when we go through uh, a transient phase, good and bad, good and bad, then it's continuously reminding us of him. Uh, also, we find that the Prophet ﷺ was sent as a mercy for all the worlds. Rahmatun, rahmatan lil alameen. As a mercy for all the worlds. And this is again unique. Because many of the Anbiya who came before, we see that they were challenged. They their system was challenged, their, their beliefs that they were bringing were challenged to such an extent where the punishment was brought down on the people not when the Anbiya were physically with them, when the Anbiya left it was brought down. We see that, we see the flood of Nuh We see what happened with the, the people of Lut We see the people of all the other, uh, 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 the uh, qom of uh, uh, um, Hud Alayhi uh, and we see this everywhere where time and time again um, the people that were, f were told to follow the Anbiya, they did not follow and as a result the punishment came down them on them on the earth. Whereas that didn't happen, I'll give you examples. So here we see the example of Nuh in which they denied him. Uh, so Allah said they denied him so we saved him and those with him in, upon the ark, upon the ship. And we drown all those who denied our verses, did not believe in our verses. Indeed, they are a blind people. We see again, uh, with reference to who the Alayhi and his people, the Qomi'ad. فَأَنْجَيْنَاهُ وَالَّذِينَ مَعَهُ بِرَحْمَةِ بِرَحْمَةٍ مِنَّا وَقَتَعْنَا دَابِرَ الَّذِينَ كَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا وَمَا كَانُوا مُؤْمِنِينَ So again, we saved him and those who believed with him with a mercy. And we destroyed, absolutely uprooted, those individuals who denied our verses and they did not believe. And we also see with respect to Thamud, uh, the qom of Salih alayhi salatu wasalam. فَأَخَذَتْهُمُ الرَّجْفَ The shriek uh, grasped them. فَأَصْبَحُوا فِي دَارِهِمْ جَاثِمِينَ So in the morning they were all lying flat on their faces dead. فَتَوَلَّ عَنْهُمْ وَقَالْ يَاكُمْ لَكَدْ أَبْلَغْتُكُمْ رِسَالَةَ رَبِّي وَنَصَحْتُ لَكُمْ وَلَكِنْ تُحِبُّونَ النَّاسِحِينَ وَلَكِنْ لَا تُحِبُّونَ النَّاسِحِينَ That way I gave you my wisdom, I offered you advice, I tried to show you another way. Rather you are not a people who like advisors. So we see, and these are all mentioned in Surah Al-A'raf, we see time and time again in a number of places in which the Anbiya were denied by their followers and then punishment came down upon their followers who denied. Uh, what I mean by denied by their followers, meaning by those who the message was brought to. Obviously, there was those who actually followed them, but those who should have followed them, they refused to follow. They felt that they knew better, and they ignored the Anbiya. Whereas when it was the, when it was the Prophet ﷺ, yani Rasulullah ﷺ, we saw in his case that this punishment never descended upon the people. Even though some punishments came, like we saw in the time of... Uh, in Makkah, similar to what was taking place when Yusuf alayhi salatu uh, scenario, or rather Musa alayhi salatu scenario, when the people did not accept the message, and we saw a number of situations arise upon the people. As for his akhlaq, we can see, and this is in his wisdom, in his pardon, in his uh, good advice, in his patience, in his gratitude, um, we can see in so many different places, and he came with the the, he came to perfect Indeed I was sent to perfect okay, the great characteristics and behavior to, to perfect them. So take good behavior, 
take excellent etiquettes, take excellent attitudes, and perfect them. Take them to the next level. So he's, he's saying that there's the, the you know good character exists because humans naturally are, are disposed towards behaving in a certain way. They naturally have good character. But what happens is obviously evil gets the better of them, and when evil gets the better of them, they behave in such a way which obviously uh, uh, sends them another track. But people naturally can learn good character, have good character, people smile, people are decent. But what the Prophet came to do was to perfect this, to take this to the next level. And that, obviously, we haven't seen uh, apart from with the Prophet way and his methodology. Uh, similarly, we see in his uh, in his calmness uh, and his mercy, فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ That he was calm and merciful towards them. Uh, uh, we can also see that he was very much severe against those who opposed the religion, those who stood against it. Uh, he, was, he was severe uh, against them. He also had an eagerness. He had an eagerness uh, for the, the, his ummah to accept iman. He, was, he, was, he would try and try and try again to make sure uh, that, that people would follow him. And he would, he would, he would try at, at all costs. He would blame himself many a time when his, his ummah would not accept the message. We have, for example, Allah SWT mentioning in Surah At-Tawbah, لَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ عَزِيزٌ عَلَيْهِ مَا أَنِتْتُمْ حَرِيسٌ عَلَيْكُمْ He is haris, he has an eagerness for you to accept Iman. He is key, he wants to really, really push himself. حَرِيسٌ uh, عَلَيْكُمْ Meaning upon Imanakum, that you accept Iman. بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ رَعُوفٌ رَحِيمٌ With towards the believers, he is kind and merciful. This is his approach. He wants, he wants people to accept, he has a, a very merciful approach. And also we can see that he has his, in order to complete uh, his message, uh, he was advised that your job is to get the message to the people. Um, but because of his eagerness, because of his desire for us, every single person to be saved, because he really wanted people to change, Allah SWT said, فَتَوَلَّ أَنْهُمْ فَمَا أَنْتَ بِمَلُومٌ That you are not blameworthy, okay? You are not at fault here if you turn away or you move on because you have tried your utmost to try to get people to think, to try to get people to change. But people aren't listening, people aren't accepting your message. We also see that this ummah has been protected. لا تجتمع على ضلالة That this ummah will not join together upon deviation. فِي فَرْئٍ وَلَا فِي أَسْلٍ Neither in a furu issue, on a, on a fiqhi issue, uh, nor on a asl, on a, on a principle, whether it's of belief or anything of that nature. And we see a number of ahadith uh, which mention this very same point. إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَجْمَ أُمَّةِ عَلَى الدَّلَالَ وَيَدُ اللَّهِ مَا الْجَمَعَ And this is actually this concept of ijma. This concept of ijma now is a rare concept which exists only for the ummah of the Prophet ﷺ. So we have scripture, both in terms of the Qur'an and the Hadith. So that's scripture. After scripture, uh, we have uh, ijma, And this is consensus. Now if you look at all the other faiths, they have scripture. But beyond scripture, they have no other means. There is no such thing as where the mujtahidun, the ittifaqu mujtahidi ummah, uh, that the, when they come together after the passing away of the Prophet وسلم, upon a new matter, Okay, ala amri min umurin fi asli min al asar, and they come together and they agree, then that is also legally binding. And we don't see that in any other of the other faiths. We don't see that in Judaism or Christianity or any of the others. We see this particularly within Islam that this ijma, this, this, this consensus of ulama, especially the mujtahideen, uh, those who are out of the ability to perform ijtihad, coming together and agreeing on a particular point, and that particular point then becoming law. That's, that's unheard of. Why? This is an extra favor for this ummah. Again, it also shows that this ummah will carry on till the end of time and situations will change. Because all the other messages were coming to one people for one time, then this message is not going to change because the people's culture won't change and the time was of a short duration by which change would not have occurred. Whereas the message which the Prophet ﷺ was bringing was coming to a whole range of people, Africans, Asians, uh, you know, Southeast Asians, uh, wherever they were, Caucasian, uh, in the Americas, in, in any or, or continent. It was coming to all people of various cultures and practices and also over a long period of time. It's, you know, 1400 odd years now since the Prophet ﷺ, uh, brought the message. Yet we see 
that the, you know, if people are still practicing in quite, uh, you know, incompatible situations uh, and far from the way the Prophet Sallallahu in terms of his setting uh, that these people are in now. So we see in this remarkable nature. Um, and I'm conscious of time and I just want to sort of uh, wrap this up as well so that the next episode I can move on to the, uh, uh, the, the actual uh, seerah itself and go into some detail. So I'll sort of bring this to a close, uh, just mentioning the unique nature as well from of, the, of the Quran itself um, in terms of what is what is capable of doing uh, and in terms of its message that is getting out uh, to the people. So one last point to make. Uh, and, and before we, we, we finish uh, this particular episode and hopefully as a means introduce the next one is we see that the Prophet of Allah was sent with an, a unique ability in his speech. It was remarkable how few words he used and how much deepness and, uh, and how much breadth and depth was in each thing that he said. It's absolutely remarkable. And then in a language and to a people who spoke highly of their own language, you know, we see the uh, uh, medicine being something of, of, of a, uh, a, 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 an absolute gift in the time of Isa Islam. We see magic being something that people looked up to in the time of Musa Islam. When literature is what people considered, poetry and literature was what people looked at in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So for the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to come, to not have been trained by any human, to have not learned anything from any hu human, to have learned directly from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, and either through, or through Jibreel alayhi salatu wa salam, to then speak in such a way that would captivate audiences of highly educated, highly eloquent and articulate Arabs who would just listen and be in absolute amazement at his speech and be dumbfounded. And we see now that books and books and books are written on the ahadith. So you can see a 30, 40 volume uh, uh, book, uh, which you know, would run the, uh, easily the, 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 the length of this table, if not twice the length of this table, discussing uh, uh, maybe 6,000 hadith. And it's remarkable what can be said about this, this, this man and how he's spoken and what he said. And this is one of the, the other points that's being made here. And before we, before we sort of uh, end, uh, uh, and we want to end on a very positive note, and that is the rank and status of the Prophet ﷺ in that, وَكُلٌّ فَضَّلْنَا عَلَى الْعَالَمِينَ We can see that the Prophet ﷺ's uh, status is second uh, to know the creature. His status is, is way up there. And I don't think in the uh, introduction, sort of the introductory uh, four or five episodes that I've delivered to you so far, I've truly been able to captivate uh, the remarkable and magnificent nature of, of this man, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But I hope that it's been a nice taster. I hope it served as a, a starter for you, uh, just to whet your appetite for what is to come. Because what I hope over the coming weeks and months and maybe years, uh, we don't know, I would hope that I would be able to go into some detail uh, covering the seerah of the final Prophet, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from beginning to end. And this will be very detailed. So I want your thinking caps on and your thinking hats on. Uh, it's going to be intense as well. Uh, so I do really want you to be sort of, you know, freed up a nice cup of tea before you sit down uh, to listen because it's very important that you follow uh, literally word for word because it will be factually based. I will be using the most authentic uh, sources that I have in order to give you a factual understanding of the Siratu Khatim al-Nabiyyin. I hope you can join me uh, in the next episode and those which follow as we now embark on our long journey to find out about this great man. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa akhru da'wana. Anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.